Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. It is an honor to join you today at Spacebound, and I want to thank Space Canada for bringing together the builders, innovators, founders, and global leaders who are developing the future of Canada's space industry. And a special thank you to Space, CEO, space Canada CEO Brian Gallant and the incredible team who brought us together today. And Brian and I actually first met back in September to discuss Space Canada and agreed that while historically space programs were government-led, today private enterprise is doing groundbreaking work and public-private collaboration is key to Canada's success in this sector. And within that, protecting Canada's valuable IP must be a priority to ensure the sovereignty and longevity of Canada's space industry. And it certainly makes me very proud to say that Canada is and has been for over 60 years a spacefaring nation. And we were the third country, in fact, in the world to earn that title with the launch of the Alouette One in 1962, a satellite that was designed and built in Canada. And Canada, of course, emerged as a world leader in space robotics in 1981 with Canadarm One. And we had our first astronaut in space in 1984, of course, with Mr. Marc Garneau. The Honourable Mark Arnault, and these were moments that inspired many, many, many Canadians in the final frontier of space. And I suspect that everyone in this room, if you closed your eyes, you could imagine a moment that you were first inspired to pursue a career in space and aerospace. Uh, for some of you of a certain vintage, it may have been Neil Armstrong's famous words when he became, became the first human being to walk on the moon. I'm sure you know them and you're reciting them in your mind as I am now, just famous, impactful words for humanity. And perhaps for others, uh, I know some of my friends in the aerospace sector, uh, the first Top Gun movie inspired them. Uh, my father and I used to watch it when I was young, and we went to see the second movie. So a lot of these things we see on TV, these blockbuster movies, or these times of visionary technology inspired many of the people that are creating incredible jobs and opportunity in Canada's space and aerospace sectors. And so I've certainly kept my eye on the developments in uh, the Canadian industry, and certainly recently with uh, US SpaceX developments, whether it's the reusable rockets or the, the chopsticks that catch them. It's incredible to witness these human technological advancements in real time. We live in an incredible age of discovery and innovation. And so it is really an honor to be speaking with you today about space and really Canada's role in it. And all of you, of course, in this room represent one of the most dynamic, high growth and high value sectors in the Canadian economy. You are strengthening our sovereignty, driving innovation, ecosystems, and creating the high-skilled careers that Canadians need and deserve. Most importantly, you're doing it at a moment when Canada must decide uh, clearly and decisively whether we intend to be a player in the next century of space or merely a customer of those who are. And today I want to talk to you about three key things. First, the moment we are in. Second, the structural barriers holding Canada back. And third, I'll share a conservative vision for partnering with you to build a competitive, sovereign, and commercially driven space program that puts Canada first and foremost. Across the world, the space sector is undergoing, as you know, a rapid commercialization. The global space economy reached $596 billion in 2024 and is projected to grow at 5.2% annually through to 2033. And countries, of course, are racing to build constellations, expand Earth observations, secure communications, and develop lunar infrastructure. And space is no longer a niche government activity. It is now a competitive commercial landscape where nations win through innovation, through speed, and through scale. In the United States and Europe, governments have embraced models that allows companies to build, own, and operate their systems while agencies act as, as anchor customers. Uh, whether it's NASA's commercial lunar payload services, the European Space Agency's Moonlight Initiative, and the Space Development Agency's rapid procurement processes, all show how agile commercial contracting can unlock entire sectors and quickly generate new capabilities for national security and the economy. And these countries are not only scaling their industries, they are securing their own sovereignty, which uh, at a time of geopolitical change we know is more important than ever. And they are shaping our global standards. And they are doing it by trusting, empowering, and investing in their private sector. And we feel that Canada cannot afford to sit on the sidelines during this critical time. And we have remarkable strengths built in. Across uh, Space Canada's nearly 100 members, you, of course, are delivering world-class innovation across, across Earth observation, wild, uh, wildfire monitoring, robotics, communications, and beyond. And so recently I received a tour of Mission Control here in Ottawa from founder and CEO Ewan Reed, 
where his team, uh, where I, I got to meet his team, uh, which includes former NASA personnel amongst other brilliant uh, innovators. And they are helping deliver Canada's first lunar utility rover program. And I even got to drive uh, their, their, uh, their prototypes and their models on their faux lunar terrain. It was, uh, it was a very, very, very cool day for, for my team. And as, a, and as the only Canadian-owned company with technology already deployed on a lunar rover, they are developing an AI-enabled system that will allow for more autonomous exploration of the moon. You're really just even saying that those, that sentence, that Canada has these types of capabilities, it's almost surreal to think that right here in, in Ottawa, in Canada, we're developing capabilities to explore the moon. Again, we are living in an incredible age. And so their work builds on decades of Canadian Space Agency rover development that began, in fact, under the Harper government in the 08-09 stimulus package, which really is an example of the political continuity and long-term vision needed to keep Canadian innovation moving forward. I also visited the University of Manitoba Star Lab, where Dr. Philip Ferguson and his team are building satellites in Winnipeg. And these satellites will soon provide critical data on sea ice patterns, strengthening Arctic research, Marine time safety, maritime safety, pardon me, and Canada's scientific leadership. And as one of Canada's leading research universities, the University of Manitoba shows how world-class innovation can come from anywhere in the country, and how the skills and ingenuity of our young people, of our students and researchers, contribute directly to national capability and national security. And I must say, uh, when I left that room, I felt very confident that in meeting those young people and how inspired they were by space and exploration, uh, that the future is in very good hands in Canada with the next generation. And again, in Winnipeg, I recently visited, visited Magellan Aerospace, which underscores the depth of Canada's industrial base, from producing satellite components to assembling the F-35 tail sections to developing life-saving technologies like the wire strike protection system. Their expertise really does show the essential, uh, how essential Canadian manufacturing is to our sovereignty and to the future of aerospace. So a special thank you to Scott McCready and Ron Dupral for hosting me for that tour this past summer. And so really these visits, and I hope to have many more, uh, please reach out to my office if you have something that, uh, that we should know, know more about. Uh, they really reinforced a, a simple truth for me personally that, that Canada really is a very talented country, uh, that we build incredible things, and we have the research capacity and the entrepreneurial drive to lead in the next century of space. I think the question is now whether our federal institutions will build the environment that allows this leadership to scale, to commercialize, and to certainly anchor itself here at home. But your industry has also communicated to me the, the challenges that you're seeing. They seem they see quite prevalent, and so I'd like to address some of those today and how we would take them on as, as conservatives. So despite strong early stage programs like the Space Technology Development Program and the Lunar Explora Exploration Accelerator Program, Canada still lacks, it seems, the, the mid and the late stage support needed to scale technologies into real missions. The Nova Space Report warns that without anchor customers and faster procurement and long-term commitments, Canada does risk uh, creating technology orphans, it calls, uh, where world-class innovations that never, never really transition into operational capabilities. And that has long-term impacts, of course, as you know, for our capacity. And traditional Canadian defence procurement, as, as many people are well aware in this room, take, can take 10, 15 years, even longer in some cases, while many space capabilities, small satellites, data services and analytics can be deployed within mere months. So the consequences for this type of procurement delay, as you know, we can see lost contracts, lost companies and ultimately lost sovereign capabilities. Recent federal analysis shows that Canada's operational needs from wildfire monitoring to maritime domain awareness require faster access to Earth observation data than our current system allows. Commercial procurement can, we believe, close this gap immediately. And as no, the Nova, State, uh, Nova Space report notes, when governments act as anchor customers, it creates the credibility and the revenue stability companies need to attract investment, uh, qualify their technologies, and compete on a global scale. And a lack of Canadian anchor customers leaves our most promising startups vulnerable, of course, to U.S. acquisition, among others. And once the intellectual property leaves Canada, as you know, it is very difficult for us to get it back. And as industry leaders regularly uh, express to me, without large-scale domestic buyers, companies simply cannot scale in Canada in many cases. And within government, space policy and programs are spread across many departments, I have learned, innovation, science, and economic development, the Canadian Space Agency, the Department of National Defence, Department of Transport, Natural Resources, Environment, and Public Safety. 
So for too long, we feel that these efforts have been siloed, and I'm sure many of you would agree. There has been no single body responsible for aligning missions, investments, or regulations. I know the panel before me spoke heavily about uh, the, the need for regulatory alignment in Canada, also security requirements and long-term planning. We all need to be rowing in the same direction, and there really is only one taxpayer. So we do feel it is imperative that we ensure that there is a coherent strategy that aligns all of these, all of these fields. And the federal government's promised National Space Council has been billed as a body which would provide whole of government leadership, address fragmentation, and ensure efficient governance and deliver an integrated approach to space exploration, security, regulation, as well as commercialization. It is also meant to coordinate the work of the aforementioned, depart aforementioned departments and agencies so Canada can act with one voice on space priorities. And as you know, the council has been announced and some of this structure has been fleshed out. Uh, but the council has not yet reached a point of launch. And so if the government is serious about its commitment, we feel it must deliver on its promise. It, it must get off the ground. It must get this important work done and done quickly. And so a conservative approach would see the National Space Council as essential to fixing the fragmentation we've discussed that holds this sector back. But it must be done, it must be, it must be more than a meeting table. So often there's these big announcements and uh, that's about as far as they go. That's as far as their impact uh, has. And so we feel that this council, in order to be effective, it must be empowered to make a strategic direction, align budgets, eliminate duplication, drive regulatory modernization, and hold departments accountable for coordinated action. Because if it does become a passive forum or a form of mere communication, it will fail to address the very problems it was created to solve, and, and our concern would be that it would become another layer of bureaucracy, and I'm sure none of you would want more bureaucracy in the Canadian government. However, if, if it is given a clear authority and measurable outcomes and, and a mandate to champion commercialization and sovereignty, we do believe it may be able to provide Canada the coherent space governance architecture that it has been missing for several decades. And that we do want to say that Canada's innovators are doing extraordinary things. And the problem we feel is, is not with the talent. The problem is with the federal framework that has, been, that has become slow, scattered, and difficult to navigate. A conservative government would take a different approach, one rooted in competitiveness, in sovereignty, and commercial growth. We feel that space certainly, as you would agree, is not a niche science project. It is communications, it is climate monitoring, it is wildfire response and security, it is Arctic sovereignty, it is domain awareness for national security and defense purposes, and it is a major, major driver of economic strength. Space must be a key part of Canada's industrial, defense, and innovative, innovation strategies. And so our plan is fairly straightforward. First, we would bring commercial, civil, and defense objectives into one national space strategy. We feel Canada needs a clear direction, not a patchwork framework of disconnected initiatives. And second, we will shift com uh, for, uh, towards commercial services and anchor customer contracts. We, we are watching NASA and the European Space Agency, which they have shown how this helps companies really to scale and keep their intellectual property at home. And this is a big problem, as you know, in Canada, so we should do the same. Third, we will speed up procurement. Companies should be able to sell to their own government, and this means multi-year contracts, pilot missions, and faster pathways for new technologies to get into service. Fourth, we would focus on building and protecting Canada's intellectual property, including support for SMEs and strengthening our prime contractors and making sure can Canadian talent and expertise stay here at home. And fifth and last, we will ensure Canadian defence spending builds both sovereignty and economic strength. Canadian, Canadian firms should be central players in delivering the capabilities needed for NORAD, for Arctic security, and for national resilience. Government's role, we believe, is not to dictate what industry builds. It is, its role is to create the conditions that allow you to succeed. Conditions defined by clarity, by speed, and a real path to commercialization. And that means backing Canadian innovators. That means supporting Canadian ownership of RIP. And it means working with the extraordinary talent, talent already in this room. We believe that Canada can lead in this century of space, but only if government steps aside when it is slowing you down and steps up when it can support you making a difference. Canada built the Canada Arm. We were the third country to design and build our own satellite. We have a legacy of leadership that the world still respects, but we cannot, we cannot rely on legacy alone. We must build a modern, competitive, and sovereign space sector that drives economic growth, that strengthens our national security, and anchors Canadian talent and IP here at home. The Conservative vision puts Canada first by putting Canadian innovators first. And we believe you are world class. Your capabilities are world leading. The people we need to build a strong, sovereign, and competitive Canadian space future are here in this room. 
And with the right partnership and the right strategy and the right procurement model, Canada can lead again. And I'm confident that the future of space can be Canadian. We just need to work together in the right way starting today. Thank you very much.